Chef Wonderful here in the garden, and I'm really excited today. Do you know why? We're going to be cooking one of the most primal and important dishes mankind has ever eaten, a fresh garden salad. Now, the one I'm talking about is unique. You may not know this, but some of the oldest people on Earth alive today are found in the Middle East, specifically in the Mediterranean on islands that are quite steep. They have to walk a lot. They eat a lot of olive oil, they eat a lot of fresh vegetables, a lot of fish, and they live past 100 years old. This is one of the reasons. Today I'm going to make you a Greek salad I learned how to make when I was a child living on the island of Cyprus. We would often eat this for lunch. The ingredients have to be all 100% fresh. Now, I don't fool around when it comes to fresh. Herbs and spices, I grow my own. That's why we're right here. You see these pots? I make sure that every day if I need mint, if I need parsley, if I need oregano, I've got it. I come out with the basket and I cut my own. I tell you, this is the way to go. So I'm just gonna take some right here. Imagine, can it get any fresher than this? No, my friends, it doesn't get any fresher than this. I want a little fresh mint, ooh la la. Oh, <laughs> c'est bon. You know, when you just take a leaf like that, and you smell that it's so deliciously fresh and sweet and minty. All right, here we go. Let me introduce you to the ingredients today. First of all, the basic core to this salad, it doesn't have any lettuce in it. This is made from the core fundamentals of the Medi Mediterranean diet. We're going to have some pepper, cucumbers, you can decide which ones you like, all kinds of different tomatoes, and I've chosen some heirloom tomatoes, the classic red onion, but here's the secret that so many people don't know anything about. There's a spice in the Middle East called za'atar. Zay, za'atar, exactly. It's spelled Z-A-A-T-A-R. Now this is a very fundamental basic. It's been around for thousands of years. And it's the spice that gives all kinds of flavor to all kinds of different dishes. So the first thing we have to do is start with the core, all right? Some other things I want to show you. You're going to want some olives because fundamentally in the Middle East, the olive is the king. I prefer to have the pits removed. This is a huge debate amongst the olive community. I would rather have pitless because I'm going to be introducing the salad into a pita bread, which makes it a sandwich and makes it so exciting to eat on the run if you'd like. That's very exciting. I'm also going to be introducing some feta cheese. And if you're vegan, you don't want the feta cheese. So you want to prepare it as an option for the vegan eaters, and we have one here in the family. So I'm going to make the salad so that she doesn't have to have the cheese touching the salad and everybody else can introduce their own feta to their sandwich. Of course, before we start, we have to feature the right watch. You never want to have a bad watch on when you're cooking. Today we're fo focusing on the steel face Daytona, white face, red band, looks spectacular. And because it's a really wonderful time of the year, and we're talking about salad, some ukutramon here for style. My St. Barnes medallion, some skulls I like, just to get the feeling, the vibe up. You want to look terrific in the kitchen. It really matters what you wear. And the last thing you want to do is start with a really ugly watch. Never let that happen. Always make sure you go into your collection and pull out something that's going to be spectacular. The food knows. It's also watching. So let's get to work. All right. We have our Blade of Desire. Remember, I've combined with this blade. This is an ancient samurai family that's making these blades since the 1800s. I have one of these folded steel blades. No one else can touch it. It's sharpened on a stone. It's razor sharp, but perfect. So with the heirloom, the whole concept here of these Greek salads is chunkiness. You don't want razor thin tomato. You want chunky. Everything's chunky bunky about this salad because you're putting it into a salad inside a pita later on. So you want that chunky monkey action. So the best way to start with the tomato is take off the top, give a little base on the bottom, and now cut into chunks, all right? I don't mind doing it this way because slowly is good. A lot of chefs debate this, but when I do it, I quarter it, and then I go into these chunks, about half an inch to a quarter of an inch in size, all right? You want this constituency and chunkiness because it makes the salad more exciting when you're actually doing the visual display. And as you're building up your salad base into a giant bowl, all of it, that's the key. Now here's a little trick for you. These are all pre-washed, of course. A lot of people don't know how to do this. My mother taught me this when I was seven years old. You got a big pepper like this, 
You want to be worried about all the little white seeds. You don't want them in your salad. So what you have to do is make a little cut on the top that you actually don't take the stem out except in one big piece. Observe closely what Mr. Wonderful's doing here. That's it. Because I, what I want to do is reach in and take it out without having all these seeds stay inside the pepper. Oh, c'est bon. You see that? That's how it's done. Don't be afraid to experiment. Time will help you. Look at the chunkiness here. Now we're going to go to the cuke. This is the core to any, any Mediterranean salad. You want to start with cucumber. Now, let me show you something about cukes. There are two different ways to remove the skin. Some people actually cut them with the skin on them. It gives it a really different texture. That's not my preference for today, although I have made salads that way. I can get a textured or a not textured. You see the teeth on this? It'll leave a little scar on the meat of the cube. I've elected not to go that direction today. I'm going with a clean cut, so I want to remove all of the skin in big cuts. Now, you take the two bottoms off using your blade, but remembering the chunk is the bunk. Now, what I like to do with this piece is often just test the cuke. I'll eat the back end like it's almost a pickle. Mmm! Mmm! Spectacular! Mmm! Fantastic! Spectacular! Now, in the chunkiness, what I like to do, and this is a lot of fun, is keep the whole roundness. So instead of cutting the cuke in half, I'm going to keep the consistency by doing these little medallions. You see that? Just beautiful. A lot of chefs don't go this way. I say they're really breaking up the integrity of the vegetable itself. Now, at this point, you're going to do something very interesting. You're going to introduce to these first elements a little bit of the za'atar. Even though the za'atar will be coming into the actual dressing, what I like to do is tease the vegetables with a little sprinkle of the za'atar so that the flavor starts to be introduced right into the flesh of the tomato and the vegetable, all of it. Of course, the onion. Red onions are a huge debate in the salad community when they talk about this because some people don't like the taste of onion. In this particular dish, I love it. It adds a crunchiness to it. Now on the chunky monkey side on this, I don't want big chunks of onion. They're too overpowering. I want to go thinner, almost string-like. That's what I like. So I, I cut the, the onion so that I can do the medallions and form little ringlets. That's what works. So you want to take the top off, obviously. You know, onions are a big deal. And, and I let people say, oh, aren't you going to cry? And I say, yes, I cry. I cry out of love for the salad. That's why my tears will be spilling out of my eyes, because I'm in love with this salad. So what I want to do is remove a few layers of this. You want to be careful when you're messing around with onions, because a lot of people don't know how to de-skin them. You want to get off the first couple of layers without really taking too much because the outer rings are very, very tasty and crunchy and I love them a lot. Now watch what I do. I cut it relatively thin. The chunky bunky motif here is not really what I want. What I'm looking for is a consistency of ringlet. And what you want are the half moon ringlets. That's the key. So you cut it in half like this. Perfecto! And then you break it up into the salad. Ringlets. You want the ringlets like that. Perfect. Isn't that magnifico? Fantastic. Now, this is where the real secret starts. A lot of people think, oh, well, I'll just buy some dressing. I'm starting, I'm going to be using a juicer for the first two lemons, and then I'm going to hand squeeze the last one, that's one of my secrets, to get a little pulp, a little personality, a little texture into the actual dressing. So we start with the classic, just take a lemon, cut it in half, put it in the juicer, see like this. And of course the juicer takes out the pulp. And of course it's, it takes out the seeds. There we go. Now here's another little secret. A lot of people think, well you just put lemon and olive oil together. Here's a really interesting way to go. If you want to introduce a different element, something that people say, what is that? I'm not sure what you've done there. That's when you introduce a little drop of lime juice. <laughs> oh la la! That is the way to go. Nobody knows that trick. So we've got a good base of lemon. 
But there's no pulp there. Now I could grab some of the pulp, but I prefer to do this manually. Another secret that the ancients taught me. See, now then you're getting pulp into it. You're getting a, a really interesting thickness you didn't have before. Of course, you have to watch for the seeds and take them out. Okay. So we've got basically 90% lemon, lemon, and then we've introduced a little bit of lime. Now, we introduce, are you ready for this? Now, I'm using a really crazy expensive olive oil called Ole Reserva. It's from Flore. This is uh, brought to America by a man uh, named Frank Giustra, who absolutely loves his, his trees in Italy, and he has this handmade. The price he charges for this is a joke. It's ridiculously expensive, but is it worth it? I have to admit, yes. It's spectacular. But I'm using it because when it comes to olive oils, let me tell you a little secret. You should always t put a little bit on your finger like this, just a little taste of the virgin oil. Oh, magnificent! What we're looking for here is a grassiness, a, 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 a unique flavor that these trees had when they were pollinated and grew into olives. And so you get this beautiful, you know, I, I must tell you something, olive oil is like wine. You really have to understand the differences of the varietals. This is a particularly beautiful, grassy, gorgeous virgin olive oil. I keep it in my wine cellar, as a matter of fact. What am I going to do now? I'm going to introduce it to the lemon. Here we go. Now, what's the right consist? What, what percentage should all be olive oil? It's going to float on, on top of the lemon. There is no specific amount that you put in. You have to have a feel. I generally like to see about around a third to a quarter of olive oil. I'm not happy yet. I'm getting happy. I'm starting to get happy, getting happier, getting happier. And I'm stopping right there because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to whisk into it a little bit of the za'atar. Now this is very important. You want a very tiny little whisk, something small, surgical and precision. You want to take just a little amount out like this. You know, what is that, a teaspoon? There's a lemon seed I'm going to get rid of. How'd that get in there? Oh, here we go. I'm putting it on top. You see the little sesame seeds? They're toasted. Ooh la la. Excellent. Now, I'm whisking it together to get this into a suspension. All right? There's still a lot of lemon in there, so that's going to be very tart, but I don't mind that necessarily. But wait, we're not finished. We're almost finished. Remember, we went into the jardin and we got some mint. Remember this? Oh, fresh mint. Quickly wash it off, but we know it's grown organically in my gardens, so it's just, there's no pesticide here, kitties, I'll tell you that. Shake it off, because what we're going to do is what I call tease the salad. I'm going to pick a couple of leaves and hand rip them right down the leaf. A little parsley. Now this is just a preference. A lot of people say, oh, what are you doing with parsley in the salad? I said, what I'm doing is I'm adding different textures. Now, we are there. This looks spectacular. Now here's how you serve it, like they did in the mountains. You get some pita bread, all right? You're going to like this. Now you're saying, why didn't you introduce the olives into the salad at this point. I'm saying, no, 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 no. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you a pita pocket. This is a mountain bread from the Middle East. Everybody's seen pitas. And we're going to just quickly take it, cutting it in half, all right? Now, pita is designed for sufalakia, but it can also, you open it up like this, so you can introduce the salad. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the salad, Pour some of this fantastic dressing, fresh. Ooh la la! Oh yeah, oh yeah. Then we're going to just, honey, can you get me the little flipper deals? Thank you. I'm just going to put it together. Yeah, I'll go with the wood ones. This is classic. So what I want to do here is just, I'm not beating it up. I don't want to bruise it. I just want to make sure that all the elements of this salad are covered with that fantastic dressing I made. 
I'm looking at it saying I'd like to introduce a little bit more of the za'atar because I don't see the consistency I want. Oh, spectacular. That is just beautiful. All right. Now, I haven't introduced the olives for a specific reason. First, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill up a pocket, mix it up with the big chunks. You're just introducing tomato with those peppers, with the onions. It all goes into the pita pocket. Look at that. And yeah, even if a hole develops, it doesn't matter because this is the way it's eaten out there. Then you take out of the brine a few of the olives and you top it on top. Now, if you wanted feta cheese, you could do that too, but I'm not doing that. I've decided to go total vegan on the first bite. All right, here we go. I'm going to make a mess here, so I'm going to put this bowl under it. Oh, my, oh, the onion, the olives, the cucumbers, the pepper, the pizza, the za'atar. Oh, I have to have another bite. This reminds me of my youth like you have no idea, walking up amongst the sheep and goats to the top of the mountain in the cypress pines in the beautiful sunshine and having this for lunch. It is so, oh. Chef Wonderful's done it again. It's ridiculous. This is so fresh, so exciting, so crispy, so unique in texture. It has to go with a beautiful wine. Today I've chosen, of course, an O'Leary Zin. Now this is a perfect wine to pair. But mind you, this salad goes with Pinot, Cabernet Sauvignon, Chardonnay, but is gorgeous, lush Zinfandel from my collection. Oh, c'est bon, c'est très bon. Oh, magnificent. Mmm. Oh. oh, my goodness. Now, of course, I could have put feta cheese on top, and I will, but I just wanted to get you through the whole experience. Th this salad, you can't go wrong with. Everybody in your family is going to love this. The secret was the za'atar and a little bit of the lime juice and the lemon and great olive oil. That's all you need. Okay, so what do you think? It's really good. A little, you know, falling apart, but... It's tactile. It's just hard to eat sometimes. It falls apart, but that's part of what makes it special. It's really good. Very, very tasty. Very hands-on. From my family to yours, we'll see you soon. absolutely great with a Greek salad like this? Well, it's a fantastic O'Leary white zin. It's a blush wine. It is absolutely gorgeous. I've chilled it because I know it's going to be spectacular. Oh, nectar. Perfect nectar.